Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Today's piece of content is a beauty. A beauty to be able to see in the dark. So, you know, just coming out of the winter months, through the winter months, we generally tend to get a little bit more flashlight content. And this one, I can say, coming out of the winter into the spring, it's a beautiful ray of golden sunshine. Okay, so I can definitely say that this is possibly one of the nicest flashlights that I have seen this year, definitely last year, maybe in the five years that I've been make, be making YouTube content. So, um, Vosteed and Raylight have done a collaboration together. So this is the Rook flashlight. And this is next level. Um, I've, I'm, I'm kind of blessed to have been able to make some content on this, mainly because it's kind of the, your, your next tier in pocketable EDC flashlights. And yeah, very nice. So first of all, thank you to Vosteed for sending this my way. Um, I will leave all of their links below so that you can see more from them. Um, certainly look forward to future pieces of content that we can work on together. Um, but let's just, I mean, let's just get into it. You really need to see how nice this is. Now for a very high-end light like this, the, the unboxing experience is, is just as beautiful and high-end. On the back here, you get some of the information about um, the different lumen levels. I will come back to some of these because you've got, your, you've got low, mid, sorry, you've got moon, low, mid, one and two, high, one and two. So there are ways in which you can configure this um, depending on how you want to use the light. I wouldn't class this as like a smart light but there are some features on there that you can either turn off or turn on uh, parts of the UI that you can also change as well but they, this that will hopefully come into make sense in a bit as well. So opening this up you get this really nice um, container you can see that it's it's a collaboration between Raylight and Vosteed. Open it up which again it's just really, it's really nice felt lining. Um, on the inside you get the instructions um, you also get some extra bits um, there is a USB type C cable in there and there are some extra where are they now there are some extra rubber O seals on there too these will fit into that little section and then here is the light itself so let me just put this to one side and here we have the light so let's try and keep this in focus now it's quite a small light hopefully you'll be able to see in my hand so compared to some uh, some of the other large tactical lights that we've had a look at recently this really is EDC pocketable so I can I can close put it in my palm close all four fingers around there and it will fit perfectly in my fist so as far as the measurements and lengths come in it's 81 millimeters which again you know it's actually really quite nice and 20 24 millimeters um, in, in um, circumference there. Now I will say, so it does drop down a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see that here, so this is the widest part here at the head, and then it does taper down a little bit towards here at the end, uh, and then it just kind of widens out here, which is where the, uh, where the tail switches. As far as your materials on this, and I know I've mentioned a few times that this is very high end, and it really is. So this is made uh, from uh, anodized aluminium. It doesn't actually say which aluminium it is. I will check. I'm guessing it will be one of the high ones. Uh, I know you've got like your 660, uh, 661 T6 uh, is one of the high ones, um, but. Uh, I, again, you know, I'll, I'll triple check what that is. The crystal in the front, so you have a TIR style crystal in the front, rather than it just being hardened glass. This is a sapphire glass crystal. I don't think I've ever seen a sapphire glass crystal in a flashlight before. I've seen them quite a few times in watches, but never on, on a, a, a piece of pocket EDC flashlight like this, which is incredibly cool. The weight of this, which does include the battery, comes in at 83 grams, which is, again, you know, it's just it's just about right. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see. So this is um, 
Now it's it's classed as grey, but it's it's almost like a browny kind of mottled grey, but it's available in three or four other colours as well. Now I did mention, so it is powered. Uh, there is a USB Type C cable in. Uh, sorry, you've also got the steel clip as well here, which can be removed if you want to to uh, preserve that beautiful rook aesthetic to it. Now for the aesthetic and the rook, I can completely see why they've called this the rook because when it stands like that, it does look like a rook chest piece so here is the base of it and here is the top uh, with the uh, with the, the turrets and parapets at the top um, but get you sorry yes getting back to the battery so hopefully you're able to see to keep this very clean minimal aesthetic the battery that powers it is on the inside which would make total sense it wouldn't be on the outside Morlander what you're on about uh, but it's on the inside and the actual charge for that is on the inside you can unscrew the top but i don't recommend unscrewing the top it says in most of the literature that that's in here just don't unscrew it mainly because that's where um the, there's a spring for the button and all of the other stuff i accidentally undid it and had to put it all back together uh, but if you unscrew the front end here and I will say so it's a bit of a thing that I do here I, I, I think I got this from my granddad who was he really liked his engineering um, but when when I undo lights like this I, I like to check the tolerances in the threads the tolerances in here you you can't you can't even notice them there was just a little bit of movement there but none nothing whatsoever this is this is engineered to an incredibly high standard but on the inside like a wazik i dropped it wazik there's a good old-fashioned english word for you wazik uh, so you have a an, an 18350 battery in there and it is one of the chargeable ones so here on the side you have your usb type c so when you do need to recharge this unless you maybe have a couple of these ones always charged and ones in here uh, then you just take it out pop it back in again the tolerance is in there really nice here is your rubber o-ring around there to make sure uh, that it keeps waterproof and then find there we go uh, as far as the uh, dust and water rating for this is concerned so this is an ipx7 the ip is your uh, well, sorry it's water and dust so it's dust and water the x means that they haven't tested this for dust um, but the uh, the water they have tested and it's up to seven so you can you can submerge this in a meter's worth of water but it's not at the top of the end where you get like a, an, an I, P, uh, so you, where you can get an X. I'm struggling with my words today, sorry about that. Uh, eight is the highest, mainly for consumer electronics, but seven is, if put it this way, if you're worried about getting it wet, you don't really need to worry about getting it wet. Uh, so in the end here as far as the I mean we, we kind of mentioned the reflector in there uh, but this is available in two different uh, LED configurations so hopefully you'll be able to see at the moment there are three LEDs that are in there um, and you can get it with either a, a Nichia 519A if you prefer uh, more of a warm look or you can get it in the Cree XPL uh, HI if you prefer um, a more kind of white light. I will say now usually and I, I think I've had my mind changed about certain things recently usually I do prefer a white light with this being a more warmer light I don't tend to go for those this might have actually changed my mind. I, I see the advantages of having a warm, natural light. So being able to see things in the dark, it's more of a, a more of a natural feel to the objects that you're looking for. It does make certain things easier to find, actually, because you know what your eye, whether it's muscle memory, I know it's not muscle memory, but you know what I mean. It, it makes it easier to be able to find things. So, yeah, I might be switched as far as uh, as far as that goes. As far as UI is concerned, the UI is the end tail cap here. You have presses for on, presses for off, uh, and then there are also some half presses. So when, when it's turned on, so here we are on, you can do half press to go between uh, low, medium, and high. Um, there are some instant ones, so you can do, oh, sorry, when it's on, you can do a double press, which will take you through to turbo. Um, and I think when it's off, if you do a long press, it will take you through to the moonlight setting on there as well. Now, I did mention that there are some ways in which you can change out some of the features on here. 
So what I'll do is I'm just going to bring this in here for a second. So you know how I was talking about before where you have these different light modes. So I keep saying so. Why do I keep saying so? Stop saying so. You have moonlight, low, medium, and there are two versions for medium. There is a 180 and a 360. There is a high, and you have two versions for high. You have a 720 lumens or a 900 lumens, and then you've got your turbo, which is 1,800 lumens. So this is where, and I, I can't really think of another way to show you this other than actually showing you the literature that comes with this. So hopefully this, this is in focus. Now I do mention that, did mention that there are a few different settings and there are ways in which you configure this. And this is, this is one of them. So it has what it's called, um, it's, it's cycle mode. So if I, let's put this on and let's put it into a high mode so you can just see it for now. When it is on, if you do um, eight clicks or more on the on the tail cap, so let me just do. Oh, mustn't have pushed it down far enough. Now I will say, sometimes getting it into the cycle mode is tricky, because you're supposed to do half presses, and you can sometimes turn it off. And sometimes you're trying to do a half press, but it's not far enough. So it's just, it's not a bugbear, because, well, I'm not that type of person. But it, it's sometimes, you, you just, it's something that you have to get used to. Let's try it again. Right, so it's done it. So what you'll see is that we did a flash, two flashes, and then it has a strobe. Two, three flashes, then a strobe. One, two, three, four flashes then a strobe, and then one, two, three, four, five flashes, and then a strobe. Let's just turn that off for a second. What that's called is the cycle mode. So you have, there are four, there are five of the cycles in there. The first cycle, or at least that first flash before it then does a strobe, allows you to change some of the settings on here. So. The way that I have it at the moment is the standard version, so we have moonlight, we have 2% of light, 20% of light, and 100% of light, which would be the equivalent on here of being moonlight, low, medium, and then high. Same, so what you have the ability to do is, I don't know if I just take that out for a second, is change the different settings that you have on here. Maybe you just want moonlight 50%, 100% and add a strobe or SOS in there. Maybe for me, I, I quite like the lower light mode, so I'm on 2%, 20% and 100%. I can change it so I get 10%, 40% and 100%. So it gives you some options on how you can do that. Mainly when you turn it on, you put it into the strobe mode. Um, once it's into that mode where it just flashes once, you then press the button again and then you can cycle through these. The second option on there is the memory mode. So at this moment in time, the memory mode, I turned it on, did I turn it on? No, I didn't turn it on, so this is off. So by default, the memory mode is turned off. Now that means that every single time you turn it on, it will turn on in moonlight mode. Personally, I quite like that, but you can turn that back on. Mode three, where you'll see it'll flash one, two, three, before it then goes on to strobe, is that you can turn off the moonlight setting. Mode four means that you can toggle the order in which things go. So you could have it come on high first, then medium, then low. At the moment, by default, it's on low, then medium, and then high. So if you have the memory turned off and you have that switched around, it will always come on to high mode first. And then the fifth one, so it goes, it flashes five times and then does the strobe, that is how you turn off or you reset all the, fa all the factory functions. So, just as, a, just as a quick show you how this works, so at the moment the memory on this is turned off. Every time it turns on, it turns on onto low mode, or it turns on onto moonlight mode, sorry. So I will change this now so that it will come on whatever the last one was, so we'll put the memory on. So I'll turn it on, in fact you can see there that it's on. I'll press it eight times, you'll see that there'll be a single flash, then a strobe, and then there'll be a double flash, and before the strobe happens, I need to depress this halfway. So, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So see, there you go, I mustn't have pressed it enough. Right, let's try it again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I turned it off that time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's it's just it's just getting used to it. It's such a such a fiddle sometimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There, strobe, double flash. Now I'm going to half depress it, and that's now turned it so that it's on memory mode. So if I put this so that it's on high, turn it off, turn it back on again, it will always come on. So you can go through those if it was that I wanted to reverse the order in which instead of going from low, medium and high, I wanted to change it so that it was high, medium or low, then I'd do my eight presses or more, which is why generally I do nine presses just in case I missed one of them. It'll, it'll, it'll flash, strobe, flash twice, strobe, flash three times, strobe, flash four times, and when it's on that fourth one, you depress it, half a press, and it will then activate that. So you can switch around, you can switch around the order of things. Well, the sun's gone down and it's midnight, but we've got a very bright moon tonight. Um, so just so you're aware, um, I know I mentioned before that I was going to keep it on the original settings, which was moonlight. 2%, 20% and 100% but I thought to get a better view of the light in the dark because it just needs to be a little bit brighter um, so I have bumped it up so it's on the moonlight 10%, 40%, 100% so at the moment this is on moonlight the moonlight setting on this um, is just half a lumen half lumen's okay I think if this had been a full lumen it would have just meant that you get to see a little bit more but when you're outside or at least sorry the other way around when you're inside and it's dark and you're trying to find your way around your house and it's it's pitch black half lumen's fine but yeah for this in environment you know just getting a little bit close to this little waterfall here but you don't really get to see much with half lumen but then it is quite light tonight so we can do a half press and that will then take us up to 10%. So this is 180 lumens. Hopefully you can see here, it's certainly a lot easier to be able to see things, being able to see these rocks here in front of me, around here, so into the lake, if we can see, just down the side there. Now, close to the middle here, there is a, a little pontoon for the ducks to get on, which is just out of sight. But then there's a tree just kind of here. Hopefully you'll just be able to see the tree. Uh, so that tree is the one that we usually look at from the other side. Uh, that's probably about five meters away. That one's probably about 10 meters away. But 180 lumens, you get roughly 16 hours worth of light from, uh, from a full charge. Now we'll say the quality of the light on this is very crisp and clear light. Um, certainly when I've seen other lights and lights like Phoenix, companies like that. Um, it's a very, a very good quality light. Um, okay, so that is, uh, that's the 10%. We can then do a half press. This will then take it up to the 40%, which is uh, 720 lumens. Now you can, you can definitely see a lot more from this. So there's that tree, a lot easier to be able to see. Coming up into the canopy, there's the other tree again, which is now a lot easier to see. It's about 10 meters away. And hopefully now you can just see the little duck house island thing there. Oh, and we had another bat. I know people were, were requesting that we had more uh, wildlife. Try and see if I can see any fish. Usually we do get to see some fish. Let's, let's get this back in focus. No, we can't really see some fish tonight. Uh, but yeah, so that's the 40%, which is 720 lumens. Now we can do another half press, and then this bumps us right up to our 1800 lumens which is which is the, uh, the high or turbo mode that tree is absolutely lit up like a floodlight now tree there hell of a lot easier to see and now we can see in the middle we can see the uh, we can see the little duck house is so much easier oh and there's that bat it keeps flying around getting this back in focus here um for your 1800 lumens you'll get roughly 1.2 hours from this from a full charge um, 
haven't seen anything as far as a kick down is concerned. We'll have to check that, but here's the opposite side of this little this little waterfall. So often when I film over there, this is this is the other waterfall that I, that I sometimes mention. There's the main and there's the bat going around again. Uh, so yeah, so let's let's go through them again. So we have we have half a lumen. We then have our 180 lumens. We then have our 720 lumens, and then we have a 1,800 lumens. Now, as previously mentioned, you know you can change what these steps are with the with that cycle mode that you can put it into, uh, and then um, yeah, you've got the different options as to which ones you you prefer to have it at. Now, one thing that I did completely forget to to mention, and I can't believe I forgot this, because it is one of the coolest features on here. Okay, so when it's on now, obviously I'm not gonna turn this into the light, but when you turn it off, it's got this really cool green glow in the dark afterglow. So if I turn this off, so this is fully turned off and that is the green afterglow. So you're at home, you've had to check something or whatever, you put this down, you think, damn, where have I put it? So much easier to be able to find this. And that glow stays there for a while. Clearly, so if you keep it on the moonlight mode, so I, I have the memory mode turned off, if we remember rightly. Um, when you turn this off, it's not as bright, uh, but when you're on, you do a double click for the uh, for the turbo mode, turn it back off again, and you get that awesome afterglow. Very cool. Now, I generally tend to find that there is a toss-up between style and function. They either tend to be overbalanced in one way, something can be very functional but not particularly stylish, something can be very stylish but not particularly functional. This is the perfect marriage of the two. I think Vosteed uh, and Raylight have created something that is incredibly functional, that when you show it to people they're like, damn that looks cool. Um, I'd like to think they came up with the name first and went, let's make something that looks like a rock. But they probably made this while they were trying to think of names and the, the, the turrets and parapets and all, all the bit around it. They're like, oh, it kind of looks like a rook. Um, but it'd be very cool if it was the opposite way around. But anyway, very, very cool light. And of course, I'll leave some links below so that you can see more um, from Vosteed. Again, thank you for sending this my way, full disclosure, you know, they did send it to me, but um, I'm allowed to give my own opinions on it. Luckily, it's a freaking sexy light, so there's a very good chance I was going to love it anyway. Um, but yes, so thank you very much. I will leave the links below. I'll leave some of my social media links as well below. Here's to walking alone in the dark. That took a very strange end, so I'm just gonna let, let's uh, let, let's um, let's ignore that. Move on, um, and yes, for now, stay safe, stay Morlander, stay safe in the dark with a flashlight, stay Morlander, and stay EDC. Shit, that went a bit uh, that went a bit touchy towards the end, a bit a bit all wordy. I don't know why that came in. Where you going, Fatty? Come on. He's a good boy. Do you want to come over into this one? Come on then. Whoa. I'd say Norman's back, but he's not back. It's the same day that I made the other content in. Ha! Hey, kiss, kiss. Go on then. Go chase some squirrels. In fact, bring me back some squirrels. Like a rook, and they're like, yes, because that's cool. Um, but yeah, this thing's this thing's awesome, and. I don't know what I was going to say. Up between style and function. Generally, handsome things don't particularly work that well. Um, apart from me, of course. Prick. Now, I generally tend to find that there is a toss-up between style and function. 